Welcome back everyone to the State of the Nation. Yes, we all are undergoing severe hardships these days. With gas to fuel to medicine to power cuts, everything seems to be in disarray. Now people are frustrated, angry and screaming at the government, asking them to give them everything the same way before the pandemic. But what most don't realize is we cannot. See, during the past few years, Sri Lanka had a sweet ride. Unfortunately, the government didn't take the necessary steps in curtailing unnecessary imports that would have saved a lot of money, purely because the government didn't want to burn the people back then. When people around the world were losing their jobs, countries were plunging into economic crisis, businesses were getting shut down, and when families were finding it difficult to put food on the table around the world, here in Sri Lanka, we were whisking through because our government did everything to ensure that our people get to enjoy li life with minimum disruption. Now, at that point, the most significant talk of the town, if you can remember, was lockdowns. The opposition couldn't make up their mind about lockdowns. At one point, they say, close the country. The very next moment, open the country. You would remember all that drama, right? But what was not on people's radar was the economic hardships we would experience if we were not careful. Certain restrictions were a must, but Sri Lanka didn't adhere to them. And now the time has come to settle our deals to the devil. Some of the um, uh, key areas that we should have focused on, also should have uh, maybe put more focus on, uh, I think uh, we didn't manage to do that, so we have to adjust for those situations, uh, especially the fuel crisis, the electricity, the power generation, the gas supply. Um, those things are, certain things are beyond our control. At least now, what people need to understand is that screaming on the road, providing very creative one-liners when a camera passes by, or protesting left, right and centre is not going to make oil magically appear in our sheds. Our dollar starts to fall into our coffers. Our gas starts to ooze from the ground. The events of the world are affecting us. And this is the new reality we have to face as a nation and face it collectively. Whilst the opposition has done everything to capitalize on this opportunity, hoping to get back into power riding this wave, the president, after missing in the public eye for many weeks, addressed a troubled nation and called for understanding and rational behavior. Api itihase one taram avasthavala vetila negitipu jatiya. Videsha akramana valata, maha sagata valata, swabhavika vipat valata, trastavadi uadru valata, api muhuna dila apasu negitala tena. Pasugiya korona vasangata yata, Api Munadun Akare, Jatyantra Ayatano la Pava, Prasansa at a lacuna. Visundum Kriatma Kirimedi, Yam Kalia, Apata Dushkara Taval at a Munadin at a Venababa, Api Seludinama, Watahagati Utui. Enisa Adairemat Novi, Me Arbudakari Tapen, Gode Mata, Jatia Quashen, Equan Lesser, Oba Seludinagem, Illacity. Despite my argument that the people of this country need to act more diligently and intelligently, I also have a beef with the government. As I said last week, the PR game in communicating with the people is pathetic. At a time of crisis, what's needed is clarity. Clarity on understanding where we are right now. No, don't expect people to find it by themselves or act rationally, especially when you can't be bothered to tell them. They didn't elect leaders on bringing governments to power to find it by themselves. They want their trusted leaders to tell them what is happening, what's going on. And once that's made known, the people also need to know what's the plan to get out of it. Yes, that too needs to be communicated very clearly. Not just once a week, in my opinion, at least 24-7. It's the responsibility of the government information people to keep telling the nation what they are doing to solve the problems at hand, an interactive dialogue with its citizens. Minister, no fuel, and long queues at petrol stations. 
Well, the minister can say, don't worry, currently we have a shortage of dollars. Still, we are working on it, speaking to the relevant officials to get that sorted out. I believe it will be uh, solved by tomorrow evening. Perhaps then, if those th things uh, were communicated to the people, then a guy who had enough petrol to last for two or three days would say, okay, if things are going to be okay in a couple of days, then I don't have to be part of this uh, you know, panic buying spree. If the government is for the people, if the government is by the people, then why don't you also tell the people what you are doing to improve their lives? Well, let's understand the current government's thinking. Uh, for that, I'm now joined by the State Minister of Urban Development, uh, Waste Disposal and Community Cleanliness, Dr. Nalika Gudeva. Dr. Gudeva, uh, good to see you uh, always. Minister, um, it seems that you all have run out of options and are even going to the point uh, you are sacrificing the very economic stance that brought you to power. I'm talking about the, this IMF solution. Is that the only option you all have right now for this crisis? Mahesh, I don't think there is any uh, uh, contradiction with the economic policies that we have put forward. Uh, the economic circumstances have changed over the last two years because of this global corona pandemic. Uh, uh, the situation that arose is something that was unanticipated. So uh, that has led to a huge dollar crisis as His Excellency uh, President himself has publicly acknowledged. So there is no denial of that fact. We have a serious uh, foreign currency problem at the moment. And in, when you try to resolve that, one of the biggest problems that we are having is continuous debt payments that we have to pay uh, every year. For example, if you take uh, 2022, we have something like US dollar 7 billion to be paid out of which about 1 billion has to be paid uh, somewhere in uh, June, July. Why is we are having a uh, issue of even buying our essential commodities? So, in order to find a solution for that, uh, we have to establish our credentials with the, the global uh, lender community also. In, in that, IMF will definitely help. And that's the reason we are going to IMF, so it's not a major shift from the policies. Well, uh, Minister, we need more than around four to five billion dollars uh, um, of a cash injection right now to calm things with regard to our economy. Now, IMF is not going to bring that anytime soon because the negotiations are going to take time. So, why is the government not focusing on getting bilateral support from friendly nations that have always helped us, like um, India and China? We see that you guys are actively working with India, but you have omitted China. Why is that? Don't you think that China can help us out of this crisis right now? Uh, I, I don't think uh, government is looking at IMF as the only solution. That cannot be, as you very correctly said, Mahesh, uh, because it, it, it will take time. It's a program. Uh, but it will help the credibility of the government when you negotiate with the other parties who are involved in this uh, picture. That's the reason why we are going to IMF. Uh, bilateral discussions, particularly with uh, overseas loans and also uh, short-term uh, uh, lending requirements, discussions are already underway as you very correctly said uh, finance minister went to India there's there's a discussion that was going on uh, 1 billion credit line has already been agreed uh, I'm sure the, the finance uh, uh, team who are handling this equipment situation I must be talking to China as well I can't comment on that because I'm not directly involved in that but obviously that has to be done we have to talk to all our friends all right, uh, I, I understand, Minister. I also hear through the grapevine that the government will renegotiate the MCC grant by America. I, is there any truth to that? Not to our knowledge, because the, the only way that I can uh, get to know about that is if there's a discussion in the group meeting, because I'm not a member of the cabinet. Uh, but even uh, if there was a discussion in cabinet, by this time, that would have been openly discussed. So, to my knowledge, there's no uh, such discussion at the moment. But I can only comment based on our current knowledge. Understand, uh, but uh, what is your economic outlook, Minister, for Sri Lanka in the next few months? When is this uh, crisis going to end? See, uh, if you look at uh, the economic situation compared to last year, this year will be a better year. If you look at the last two years, that was disastrous. If you look at the whole problem, uh, how, how uh, this uh, situation got developed was uh, every year, for the last couple of years, uh, there was always a gap of about 8 million to 10 million dollars, a trade gap in our country. Let's say your uh, exports are only 10 to 12 billion and your imports are 20 to 22 billion. 
Uh, there's that gap always. Even in 2022, the prediction is there will be about uh, 10 billion US dollar gap. How did you bridge that gap in the previous years? That was a hand to mouth solution. Uh, the tourism and uh, foreign remittances together uh, gave us about 10 billion. So you essentially cover that loss. But uh, in order to pay debts and other development requirement, you still have to borrow. So it was not a good situation at all. So this year, uh, I think uh, the way I understand is government is looking at uh, reducing this gap. For example, I think even at President uh, Gotabe Rajapaksha's address to the nation, he mentioned they are, try they are hoping that the exports will grow uh, by about another uh, 1 billion from 12 billion to 13 billion. And I think the expectation is uh, to bring the uh, import bill also by about another 2 billion. Uh, and there is expectation that uh, tourism and the IT sector, the services uh, and also the foreign remittances will also grow by about another 10 billion. So we do, with these uh, things, uh, we can uh, reasonably expect this year there won't be a drop in foreign currency level. In fact, uh, at least uh, 2 billion foreign, uh, foreign reserves increase we can expect this year. But this is not good enough. As you very correctly asked Mahesh, you can't look at one year. You have to look at long term. I mean, you can't look at, you have to look beyond this government. I mean, we are talking of a nation at the end of the day. So, in that scenario, we have to somehow increase uh, our methods of uh, earning foreign currency. What are those methods? One is uh, exports. Exports is still at 12 billion. I think something that we must be ashamed of as a nation. You can't blame any government for that. After 73 years since independence, uh, having only 12 billion exports is something is terribly wrong in our system. This should have been at least 20 billion in my opinion by now. So, a lot of things we have missed out. So, we have to work at these issues and find out why the exports are not growing. Why are we, uh, are we not giving sufficient facilities to uh, FDIs? Are we not giving sufficient facilities to these exporters? Are we not looking at uh, new market opportunities? For example, agriculture sector. If you take a smaller country like Netherlands, which is much smaller than us, the, the, the agriculture is the main export. Now, Sri Lanka agriculture, we are talking about self-sufficiency, but we are not into exports at all, very marginally. And also, uh, IT sector. Uh, foreign remittances, the, the remittances, then tourism. These are areas that we have to very actively work with during the last, next two, three years and work towards that. So that's the only way. The long-term solution is to increase uh, revenue from uh, uh, foreign currency sources. Hopefully. Well, thank you very much, uh, State Minister of Urban Development, Dr. Nalka Gudeheva. As always, it's a pleasure to see you, sir. Thank you. Let's take a short commercial break. On the other side, we will talk about someone's aspirations of becoming president. We'll be right back.